Welcome, everybody. Well, today's topic is Tesla Energy. While the world focuses on Tesla's auto business and the investing firms continue to view Tesla as just another auto manufacturer, this is about to change big time very soon, even as soon as next week at Tesla's Q4 earnings call, or if not then, certainly by Q1, Tesla is going to shock the world, showing them how much Tesla Energy is growing. Elon Musk has stated multiple times that energy will be much larger than the auto business. Randy Kirk is here with us again. I've had him on the channel a few times now talking about Tesla Catalyst and Tesla's 21 modes. You should watch those two videos, but only when you finish this one. Welcome, Randy. Thank you for joining me again. Hey, it's great to be back. I loved it last time. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of fun this time, too. So Randy is a super experienced entrepreneur running a successful product manufacturing business, as well as 20 other businesses. He's also written now 10 books and recently having written two books on Tesla, The Elon Musk Mission and The Elon Musk Method. Today, we're going to be reviewing Tesla's first mega pack factory in Lathrop, California. What is the current production of mega packs and expectations for the year? And the potential for outsized margins, as many are calculating and forecasting. Elon also recently stated that energy, in his mind, the total addressable market is practically unlimited and into infinity. I just absolutely love that. So Randy, you're going to have to help me get brighter about Tesla energy. So Randy, in your latest book, right, the Elon Musk mission, which you just published just in October of last year, there's a whole section that you already had there on Tesla energy and its potential, right? And what I understand was Tesla had a mega pack factory that they in Lathrop, California, that they broke ground on September last year in 2021. And by March, they actually were able to start producing their first batteries. And with just less than a year after they broke ground, it's like almost in full swing already. And you had written all about that. In addition to that, there's this Mark Henry who goes by um, at zero sum game 33 on Twitter. And he's been writing up a whole analysis on Tesla energy. And what he said was that while in Q3 of 2022, Tesla's energy business maybe makes up about 5% of Tesla's total revenue, at that time, it generated zero profit. But what his research is now showing is that this is about to change. It's going to change big time. And it's much like a sleeping giant. So let's start with Lathrop, California. Can you tell me a bit more about what you know about that mega pack factory? Yeah. So I, I, I give a zero sum 30, a zero sum game 33 mega props. <laughs> this is, we're all about <laughs> mega today. <laughs> yeah. He did some amazing reporting, but the other authors of the uh, the Elon Musk mission and I, we broke the story. We broke it back in October before Zero Sum got started. Um, and I have to say that Zero Sum has really straightened me out on a couple of things. And one of those was yeah. the margins. And the other was really where they were in terms of production. So uh, the basic reporting suggests, the most recent reporting that I'm seeing suggests that they are at about 25 of these units a day. And they're 2.2 million dollars a piece roughly which would give us a, something over 50 million dollars a day coming out of that little factory in lathrop california that's pretty darn impressive so yeah. that's the reporting that i'm hearing now um uh i don't have anything to supplement that or to or to uh, clarify it uh, i'm going along with that reporting see everything about it they've attacked it several different ways different people have come in and reported i think it's solid numbers Okay, good. And so tell me more about Lathrop. So you're saying it's already at 25, but what is it producing? Um, like you said, 25 at this point, but what is it about? I've heard that the, there was original version of the mega pack factories that was based on a 217 and NFPs or NM, M, M, NMCs that was much uh, less cost or sorry, much more cost and more costly to produce as well and less price that they're selling to. And then now they switch to the LFP version. Well, they switched everything. So just like any uh, factory owner, like when I had my plastics manufacturing business, they, they did a pilot line. So they did a pilot line in Reno, and they were producing a smaller unit that had less battery capability in it, less megawatts or gigawatts or fractions of gigawatts in the, in the unit. 
um, and the overall cost was less. And as you pointed out, they were using a different battery. Once they had their research done and they had some more knowledge and information, they switched over to Lathrop, where they were making a larger unit that stacks way more batteries in it, d almost double the the, uh, the the price to the uh, end user or to the user, um, and also uh, using the batteries. Well, so you have all of these savings that went into that switch. You, you're using a less expensive battery with higher capability. Each battery has more uh, uh, density. You have a more batteries packed into the same unit. You're now mm -hmm. in a factory setting, so all of the uh, capabilities of scale are there uh, to bring down the cost of the labor and of the, uh, you know, all of the various parts and components of it all scale up. So at this point, again, yeah. giving credit where credit is due, I'm just going to call him Zero because I always <laughs> blow his name. So Zero has shown two different ways at least, and now has gotten cooperation from some other folks that the margins on these things out of this factory are yeah. probably in excess of 50%. That's going to so be crazy. That's yeah. a huge that's a huge deal. <laughs> okay, so that's the thing that our community has been trying to examine whether or not that's overstated or not, but here's my understanding, right? What they are reporting today is not uh, indicative of what they're about to report and the reason is because of the things you just mentioned, right? So what they're reporting today was the old 2170 NMC batteries. And because the battery cost is 50% of the cost of the product, I'm just reading out and from based on what Zero has reported in the past. And the LFP batteries are 20 to 30% less than these NMC batteries and the price. So these Gen 2 batteries that they're now making is, 30, is priced at 33% more per kilowatt per hour. And then the production scale is five to 10 times more uh, because now that they have Lathrop. And so because of all that, that's how you guys are calculating the margin to be a yeah. lot higher than what they were calculating before with the old version, correct? Right. And, you know, there have been people that have put up some arguments in terms of how can you, especially when you're talking about a, a product of that, I mean, typically the higher the dollar value of a product, the less margin you work on. Um, no. Typically, um, you know, you're looking at uh, the buyer who's going to look at something like that and go, I'm not going to give you those kind of margins. Um, you know, I'm going to go somewhere else if that's what you're going to charge. But the truth is, as Elon said, the TAM is yeah. unlimited and the uh, competition is zilch. So we'll talk about this, that right now. We'll, yes. we'll talk about that shortly, right? Who are they selling to? I just wanted to, to say, though, in, in terms of just the overview, if you mm -hmm. have no competition and unlimited TAM, you can charge what you want. <laughs> no competition, limited TAM. Well, the, there's a, a lot of folks that were saying that th this is some, not that hard to do. These are batteries. You just put a, you know, slap them together. It's not like a car that you're making. And that there are competitors. I've seen a table where the only competitor that is really uh, important is CAT, uh, CATL. The rest are not in terms of all the uh, ways right. that are... Um, Tesla's batteries compare, but let, let's get there shortly. But let's start sure. with the second question, which is, um, you know, Lathrop is up. They're already producing. What is the current production and your expectations for um, 2023? Yeah. So now I'm going to start going to some speculation, not necessarily all reporting. So if it's 25 uh, packs a day and you have the capability to do uh, 10,000 of these packs a year based now, that's Tesla's number. Um, 40, 40 gigawatts, 10,000 of these packs. Um, yeah. That's not based on reporting. That's what Tesla claims. Um, and so at, at your, your ability to ramp is still clearly there. 25 times 30 days would be uh, um, uh, 750 uh, of these uh, units per month. Uh, yeah. It's getting pretty close to 10,000 a year, but you have some room to continue to increase. So you're going to increase to 10. I think it's going to go past that. I think uh, I think that they are probably, as they ramp, as they get more better at it, they're going to find that they can actually do more. So I think we may pass that number in 2023, but we will certainly start to pass that number in 2024. Um, but I also, and here's where the speculation comes in, Elon has said that energy is now pedal to the metal Making batteries is pedal to them. Everything is pedal to the metal. I think this is what Master Plan 3 is going to be talking about, that he has what he needs to do this. 
And he has said that his goal is 1.5, well, a total of three terawatts by 2030. In, and half of that, more than half of that has to be energy because it's only going to take one terawatt to do autos. Some of that's going to go into semi-trucks, which require a tremendous amount of batteries. But I'm speculating that at least one terawatt, probably more like 1.5 terawatts of that total number is going to be an energy storage. In order to get there by 2030, they have to start dropping these plants quickly. <laughs> and so wow. I've been speculating that they might be building the equivalent of two to three Lathrops this year, maybe five the following year, and then five the following year. Now, that could be one plant that does five times as much as Lathrop. But something on that order, they need to multiply the number five times a year for the next five years in order to have any shot at getting to 1.5 terawatts. Okay, so you're, you, just some, you just had some crazy things here. You just had two to three Lathrop, so two to three mega factories, 2023. You are Breaking expecting ground. Breaking ground, yes. that March 1st, when they do Investor's Day and they're going to talk about large scale uh, deployments, you're going to be you are expecting at least two mega pack mega pack factories being announced. Well, I don't know if they'll announce it that day. I'm saying if you want, I'm just yeah. taking the numbers that have been given us. This yeah, is yeah. Yeah. this is how I came to the conclusion in the book that was published three months ago, almost three months ago. Yeah. Just taking the numbers that Elon gives us or that Tesla gives us, you back into it. Okay, you're not yeah. going to build. 25 plants in in uh, 2029 okay you're going to be ramping up between now and then yeah. if you're going to be ramping up between now and then you need to start now yeah. <laughs> and you have the capability this is the other thing the the product is the factory the fact mm -hmm. you know this is what elon's been talking about for a long time he's got the prototype now to to either expand lathrop i don't know if the building can take any expansion right. Put another one there in Lathrop, which might be the easiest thing to do, or start cookie cuttering them all around the world, yeah. all around the United States. Those are three potential ways to go. But yes, I would say they need to cut ground on two to three this year, and then five in 24, wow. five in 25, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, the good news is that it only took one year for this to break ground to actually start producing. And now that they've got their first one down, it should be a lot faster. So, exactly. okay. Let me ask you about 2023 expectations. And I saw a dis discrepancy between the numbers you're, you're saying and what I saw that zero sum game is reporting. Okay. So zero sum is saying that by the end of 2023, this year, Tesla will have deployed 64 gigawatt per hour of capacity. That's mm -hmm. equivalent to eight time increase. That's already massive of the uh, period ending of la uh, third quarter of last year. And then he's expecting $16 billion in gross profit that will contribute. Um, that's contribute. That's generated by Tesla's existing 16,000 uh, mega pack backlog at Lathrop. Okay. And, yeah. Okay. So let's, let me show you this. Let me share this um, table that he shared that he, he, there is a resource that he identified. I didn't type it here where he got this from, but basically 63 gigawatt per hour by the end of 23. And you can see the massive jump from what it was. So this is Lathrop. This is what Lathrop is about to do. And this is how much they're moving, but he's saying 63. And then he shows his profit again, at $16 billion. Now, you shared me this, this table here, and let me kind of like skew, scoot in here, but when I look at your table, you're saying 39 gigawatt power and $11 billion of profit. So can you tell me a little bit of why you think they're different? Yeah, there's a couple of things going on. And, and in fact, Zero has identified this over the course of the last week. One of the things that's going on is the accounting. So when do you account for these products being, sh being uh, um, when, when, do you, when do you get to put it on the books? <laughs> so yeah. unlike a car, you finish the car, you sell it to somebody, you get, you get the sale. Now, there could be a transition. So you, you've made the car, it's sitting in the lot, it's sitting on a ship, it's sitting on a train, it gets to the destination, it sits in a showroom. You don't get to count it as a sale until the consumer buys it. Well, you've got a more complicated situation with regard to these energy storage packs, because what you have is you're maybe you're selling 50 of these or 100 of these to the customer 
and the project isn't completed until the project is completed. When do you get to put it on the books? So they might ship, um, you know, uh, 10,000. They might, they might manufacture 10,000 mm -hmm. of these next year, but they won't all be accounted for yet. They will be in various parts along the way in terms of the accounting process. So that is going to skew the, the actual recognition of the sales volume as well as the profit uh, of these units into future months. So that's part of the difference between him and me. The other part of the difference is, is that I didn't take into consideration maybe as many units of uh, power walls as he did. I think he's got a lot of power walls in that number. Uh, I did not add as many power walls. So I could be a little, I, I could probably bump my number up a little bit, uh, taking into consideration what that ramp might look like. However, I don't have any information on that ramp. All we have right now is the current, as far as I know, all we have is the current production, roughly current production numbers from a few months ago. Um, and uh, we are not being told anything about expectations going forward as of this minute. Okay. This is the table you shared with me. Is there more commentary you want to add to this and explain to people what we're looking at? No, I think it was really uh, zero and I are really exactly the same or pretty dang close to the same with regard to cost of goods and profit. So about 25% um, is going to, you know, 20, tw um, I'm sorry. Yeah, 25%. The, the product sells for $500 per, uh, per kilowatt hour. So you can just divide the total number of gigawatts sold by, by two. You're going to get roughly the, the, the sales volume and then divide that by two again, you get the profit. So it becomes, if you want to use simple math, you want to use back of the napkin, that's a rough way to look at things. Okay. This is good. I love your table. I think that it's um, nicely laid out and pretty clear about the megapack capacity is 40 gigawatt per hour. So when I look at like what the prices are, you kind of start hitting at that and what you think the margins are. Again, this is what Zero is saying. He's saying that, first of all, there's a 1.5 year backlog uh, based oh, on that. yeah, at least Lathrop's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lathrop's uh, capacity of 40 gigawatt per hour, like both you and he are saying. And then he says, you can, you can buy a single mega pack for $2.1 million or 100 mega packs for $1.8 million each. So volume pricing, there's a maximum of 20% volume discount. And then if you kind of do an estimate of the order mix between single and people that buy 10 or 50 and 100 at a time, his estimate of the backlog is worth $32 billion in revenue. <laughs> That's a lot. That's the backlog that they have yeah, now. It's huge. And, and, you know, as he points out, uh, we're not only talking about revenue from the battery hardware itself, but like with so many things, Tesla, you have a design cost. So Tesla is the designer for most of these units. The, the companies hire Tesla as the designer. In fact, it may even be required to use Tesla as the designer. That's an additional cost. Then you have the actual construction of the site and deployment. And apparently Tesla is doing that most of the time as well. So there's a there's cost involved there and profits. And then you have ongoing uh, income from maintenance and from software and from energy, uh, from energy arbitrage, uh, which Tesla... I, nobody knows yet exactly, maybe we'll never know exactly how those contracts will be written and maybe they'll all be different between who gets the arbitrage between the, the grid and the, and the uh, owner of the, um, the owner of the uh, mega packs, you know, who is going to get the benefit of that arbitrage um, that that's yet to be seen. Okay. Can you explain to me a little bit of who you're selling it to? So we're talking about the pricing there. Who's the market? Um, I've been, whenever I say, oh, it's it's uh, public utilities, I've been told it's not just the utilities, it's also commercial. What can you say about that? Okay, so there's a whole bunch of, uh, of <laughs> the market, again, is unlimited. But you would start out with the utilities, and the utilities have about three or four different uh, uses for these. The most obvious one is peaker plants. Okay. Uh, the return on investment on peaker plants is extremely fast. Um, in fact, there are plenty of people out there right now who are saying that you could literally tear down a brand new peaker plant 
just throw it away. <laughs> you just put it up. <laughs> just throw it away and put up mega packs instead, and you would pay for it in short order. Um, it's the the cost savings because of the how quickly the power comes on. Uh, the, obviously, a coal or gas generated peaker plant is going to take a while for it to respond to the energy needs of, in the grid. Um, it, 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 there's there's uh, the arbitrage the the ability to judge it and rate it as things go on. Anyway, the numbers are out there. Uh, it's going way into the weeds to go there. I think for this particular conversation, but the truth is. The utility or whoever it is that owns this peaker plant could literally tear down a brand new plant um, and make money. Uh, for those who are in the process of, of having a peaker plant that might be 20 or 30 years old and they're going to uh, uh, take it offline anyway, it's an obvious decision to go this direction. In fact, I think it's true that no gas or coal fired peaker plants were put into operation in 2023. At least that was some reporting that I saw. Okay. Yeah, so I was looking at James Cap, and he was talking about the peaker plants. And what he said was there's a 1,000 gas and coal peaker plants, and they provide 236 gigawatts of power. And then if you put that number in context, he says that's 236,000 megapack equivalent. And Lathup is able to do 10,000 per year. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. right. So that's 24 years of full capacity production. Um, and, and that's so, just the United States. That's just the United States, right. And so, uh, so you know, these renewable energy installed capacity is increasing also. And that's where I think the, the term infinity, because as you kind of build, uh, catch up to what you can replace, then it's continuing to change. And that's where they're saying that it's infinite. infinite. Um, yeah. So, oh, yeah. so well, the, yeah. the infinity the infinity goes beyond the fact that you're going to be increasing the amount of power that people use. As power gets cheaper, of course, people will use more power. Just that's just the natural way things go. Plus, it'll eliminate gas and oil and and uh, and coal and dung and charcoal. <laughs> charcoal meaning right. wood. Um, so you eliminate all of those. So electric is going to have to you know uh, replace all of those. So yeah. So you have a virtually unlimited TAM on this. Um, and and that's just um, replacing it in the utility environment. So the, as we as I started to say, you have the, the utility using it for peaker plants, but you need right. the utility to use it wherever they're putting in solar and wind uh, to be able to balance the days and the nights and when the wind is blowing and not blowing. So okay. that's another huge use that the utilities have for it. And then they can use them, assuming that they use have all of the peaker plants they can possibly get, and they have all of the solar and wind uh, that they they need to be I installing. If they have a few of these mega packs left over that they could possibly buy, you can use them all by themselves for managing the uh, you, managing the uh, grid uh, in order to uh, better utilize uh, the the electricity that's going through the grid. Okay. In addition to the public utilities, which we uh, kind of understand is recession proof, right? doesn't matter if there's a massive recession this year. Um, utilities are going to continue to buy and can act on their own without, you know, it's not a consumer thing. But I'm right. also told that this is sold to commercial, which is also recession proof it, to a certain extent. Tell mm -hmm. me how you see, have you modeled out what commercial would do or is everything you've done just peaker plants, um, utilities? <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not a modeler. I don't spend hardly any time modeling. I'm a back of the napkin guy, kind of guy, but I had a manufacturing plant. I had a plastics yeah. manufacturing plant that had a fourteen thousand dollar a month utility bill. <laughs> okay, yeah. and that was twenty five years ago. Yeah. It was fourteen thousand dollars a month. Okay, we contemplated moving our facility from Southern California to Utah just because of the electric yeah. bill. Okay. Right. And we, I mean, we went to a lot of trouble to think it through, to look at buildings and the whole nine yards, to uproot our families, to uproot the families of our employees in order to move to Utah because of that electric bill. And we could have, it would have worked. We just decided we didn't want to do it. Now you can do the same thing or better by putting some solar on the roof and putting one of these uh, mega packs in. And, and, and for a small manufacturer like me, I wouldn't have wanted the, you know, this huge machine that they're uh, selling to the utilities, but they sell a smaller unit as well, or a bundle of power, you know, power walls or whatever. There's a number for everybody. But today, right. no, any manufacturer, any um, large retailer, any mall, anybody yeah. that has 
large utility bills, the mega pack or some version of energy storage is going to be a part of the deal. Yeah. And they don't have to get the solar, right? They can just get the mega packs and then kind of like use the, you know, use it energy when it's cheaper at nighttime and then use that in the daytime, right? But buy it at a cheaper time. Is that right? They absolutely can, but I don't know who will in the future. So again, 25 years ago, 25 years ago, I investigated <laughs> solar for my little company, and it was just not quite no. efficient enough. Oh, it it would have been yeah. fine. It just would have taken too long to pay off. But you know what's happened to the cost of solar panels yeah. in 25 years. So today, it's hard to imagine anybody with a flat roof and manufacturing that isn't going to be interested in switching to solar combined with Megapack. And certainly for malls and, yeah. uh, and dis distribution centers and things like that, that solar is going to be everywhere. Is this what you mean when you were telling me about the additional revenues and the downstream income? <laughs> so if you go in, you're going to sell them a Megapack. Oh, by yeah. the way, while I'm selling you a Megapack, let me sell you some solar. Oh, by the way, while I'm doing all of that, let me sell you some software that's going to yeah. help you to arbitrage this with the, with the, uh, with the utility grid um, and also at the same time sell you software to maximize the use day and night. Anyway, you get the point. It's going to be the, ongo the, the additional potential revenue in, in, at the point of installation and the downstream revenue from the, uh, from the software. Yeah, it's just going to be continuous. Yeah, so JP Sartre and Zero, they both point out that the, one of the reasons why their margin um, projections are so much higher than everyone else, like 50% or higher, is because people are not putting in the installation and maintenance. And just the installation and maintenance, which is ongoing, once you've sold them the mega pack, yeah. this is that you know they're going to continue to work on for the several years. It's apparently a pretty, pretty lucrative business, and you've got a captured market or something, you know, something like that. Pretty, pretty much, pretty much, yes. Okay. What are the markets? Have we already covered that? <laughs> I mean, is this global? Is this global? So yeah. It's global. It's not only global. I mean, China is already doing this. China is putting in so many solar and so many wind farms. Uh, I think you and I talked about it one time. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, British Isles and the, all of the Northern European countries that are so far ahead on energy uh, transition, uh, they're putting in offshore and onshore wind as well as solar, even in the colder climes where the sun doesn't shine that much. Uh, yeah, this is this is going to be uh, India. Uh, Tony Seba says that India could completely convert to electricity uh, in a very short period of time. It would cost them one trillion dollars. There's a hundred billion of them. It was a hundred dollars a piece. <laughs> no, ten dollars a piece. Wait, <laughs> I'm always doing power 10 problems. If it's going to cost you a trillion dollars to make the transition and you've got a hundred, no, you've got a billion people. That's the problem. So yeah. it's a thousand dollars per Indian to trans to completely switch over India because the sun shines a lot in India. Yeah. Well, you, you fully expect that they're selling global, but not just the U S and so so it basically, it's, it's production capacity uh, limited, and then you're saying that they're going to be announcing mega pack factories this year. And I asked this question to Gary Black uh, and other financial analysts: At what point would Tesla start reporting on Tesla energy production and delivery, not just auto, in their quarterly reports? And he said they're absolutely going to do it, and he thinks expects it's going to happen sooner than later, if not this Q1. Uh, I certainly hope point, so. I've been asking for it for a year. <laughs> yeah, I would yeah. like them to announce that at quarterly earnings. I think that they should be consistently updating us on the uh, number of uh, of uh, incidences uh, with uh, full self driving. There's a number of little metrics, uh, yeah. key key performance indicators that I think would be great for the stockholders uh, as well as for uh, the general community just to be updated on on a regular basis. Yeah. And, and it's, it'll change the narrative, right? It'll stop, right. you know, at some point, you're not going to be an auto manufacturer. You're going to right. be an energy company as well. So tell me, what is your projection of when does the margin, the, when does the, the earnings and the revenue for Tesla Energy become significant enough that it would be, you know, something that people will go, okay, this is an energy company, not just a market manufacturing auto manufacturer, because auto manufacturing is $100 billion. It's growing fast. And so how does energy catch up, right? I know it's exponential, but it's a billion dollars now and it'll be 5 billion or what, what is your, yeah, your, your profit here is uh, your revenue is 5.5 billion by the 
third quarter of 2023, $2.7 billion of profit. May not yes. be enough, right? <laughs> well, I think I think that the I think that the the street, if you will, yeah, should begin to get it at the fourth quarter of the earnings coming up next week. If they okay. don't get it, if they don't get it by the end of the first quarter earnings in April, then yeah. they're asleep at the switch. Because again, mm -hmm. you don't have to be, you don't have to spend three hours a day like I do, you know, investigating Tesla and Elon and everything else that I do in order to be able to come to these conclusions. It doesn't take a, a rocket scientist <laughs> to be yeah. able to say, okay, Elon says he wants to do this. Elon has a plant already that does that. It doesn't look very hard to ramp. It doesn't. Right. It takes only a few months from the. Well, they didn't. They didn't break ground there. By the way, that was an existing building, so they were able to put this into an existing shell. So that's a little one of the reasons why it happened so quickly. But even if you broke ground, it only on these tilt ups today. Man, I, I'm a, I'm along the 60 freeway in Riverside, California, and the yeah. these uh, distribution centers. Man, they put those things up so fast to make your head spin. So you just need a square building for these things. Uh, it's not a big deal. So I see the ramp being very, very rapid. I see uh, that the street is going to understand that. I don't think they're that dumb. Um, and I think that that will start to be figured in. I've just done a, a video. I think it came out this morning. I, can, I can't keep track anymore. Uh, where, where I don't think that Tesla stock will be affected very much by catalysts until the risk off attitude changes yeah. in general. Yeah, I think, yep. We need a more of a risk on, or at least a neutral attitude on the street uh, yep. in order to pry some of the cash off the sidelines before these catalysts are gonna matter much. But I also expect, I'm just, you know, I'm spitballing here, but my my feeling is that the risk, that they, they'll have itchy fingers. <laughs> the street is gonna get itchy fingers and wanna start deploying their money in something besides bonds. Okay. Well, that's something to look forward to. And I, I think that many of the Tesla community is starting to think about this and evaluate it and analyze it and agree that there is a potential, right? If they show the margins, earnings, they show the sales and show that it's actually a significant line item, even though not compared to auto, it's still something that they should look at. Now, so we're one of the biggest... Piece, we're missing a big piece. I hope maybe you have it as a future question. I'm not yeah. sure. But we're missing the piece about the uh, IRA. Yeah, go tell me about that. Okay, so yeah, we don't know yet. Okay, and I and I've been very strong on this in my book and and since we have to make sure that we don't give credit on the I, the in, in uh, um, the Inflation Reduction Act that we don't give credit to both the cost of goods sold and also as a, a for every product in the line and also put it as a separate line item and think of it that way. We have to make, our, make a decision. Where are we going to count the IRA money? Because in the first year, in this year, maybe we get 4680 cells on, in, uh, in uh, Austin. Maybe we do 50 gigawatts for the whole year. That'd be lovely. I hope that happens. That would be another catalyst, by the way. <laughs> but, but if we're getting close to that or something like that, so we'll get $35 for making those cells, and we'll get $10 for putting in them in packs. So we're going to get that whole $45. But those aren't going to go in these energy packs. Those are going to go in cars. Okay. Mm. Then we got Panasonic, and Panasonic is making cells for, um, for uh, Tesla. And those cells um, probably qualify. And it looks like uh, contractually that Tesla will get the $35 for those as well. Yep. But is the raw materials in those cells qualify? I'm not sure, but they, I think they do. So that's another question. But let's say they do. I don't think those are the cells that are going into the energy storage units either, okay? Because they're not the right chemistry. So I, don't, I think there's going to be used in cars as well. So the products that are going to go into the energy storage packs, we might be able to get the $10 for putting them in packs, but I'm not 100% sure we're going to get the $35 on those at all this year. Now then, this is where thinking ahead really matters. How many plants are being built in the United States right now to make battery cells? Yeah. And almost all those guys want to sell to Tesla. 
and Tesla is going to be ramping up their capability. Again, Elon says he wants to be at one terawatt of his own production in the U.S. as quickly as possible. So that $35 and the $10 on every one of those units is going to go right to the bottom line for Tesla. So we, where do we apply it? No. Do we apply it to the storage packs? Because this has been a big part of the story the last few weeks. Do we apply that $45 to these storage packs? Do we no. subtract that from cost of goods? As a manufacturer, I wouldn't have. I would have made, the, I would have made that item as a separate item, not as part of my cost of goods. Now then, if CATL has a manufacturing plant making cells in the United States that qualify, and I beat up CATL within an inch of their life over that $35, and they decide to split it with a $17.50 each, now my invoice says it's $17.50 cheaper, then that becomes a cost of goods item. And maybe I've gone way too deep in the weeds at this point, but but this is an important aspect of where the profits are going to come from in the future. At $45 per kilowatt hour for this kind of, of huge numbers, it adds up to being more than the profit would be uh, for just the hardware. Yeah. What I understood listening in on these Twitter spaces with some of these um, folks that have been doing these reports and research is that the IRA is going to apply to both, with regards to Megapack and Tesla Energy, it's going to apply both to the producing and the consumer. I've heard 50%, even just the factory production of the Megapack batteries. So, yeah, <laughs> that's a, if that's true, it's crazy. There's a 30% for the next couple of years that the people that, get, that buy it, they get 30% from the IRA for buying the thing. But I yeah. think that ends, according to some of the reporting. So there's a lot of confusion. And one of my big catalysts for 2023 is when we figure out what the IRA actually says, that'll be a catalyst. <laughs> mm -hmm. When we can actually okay. do the math, that'll be a catalyst. Okay. So um, let's talk competitors. Um, and moats, Tesla's moats, right? One of the biggest uh, comment I've heard about competitors is that what, what you know, mega packs and Tesla Energy um, is a commodity, and if you can get fifty percent and sky high margins like that, everybody's going to jump into the game. And all you're doing is it's a battery that you're attaching, you know, steel around it, just put a little wrap up uh, container around it and you're done. This is nothing fancy, nothing difficult to do. And uh, that's what I understood. Now I'm going to just share this. I don't really understand this too much. I didn't really um, review it too much, but this is a, the, all the different competitors that uh, Tesla has. So we got uh, Fluence, CATL, BYD, Right, SunGrow, um, I don't know LG. I think even GE and others are in here are are competitors too. But um, according to James Cat, I think this came from that you know across the board, Tesla is much better than all of them except for CATL. And if you look at the pricing, the cost, the labor, the the cost for creation of these things, yeah, I can't really can't really read. Sorry, it's too far too far here. But generally, that's what this table was representing. What's your thoughts on the moats that Tesla have and the competitors? All right. So I'm going to start from a uh, first principles theory here. And first principles tells me that when you have an unlimited market and the market will be dying for these, it won't be like, oh, please, uh, you know, when you get around to it, could you send your salesman? When these utilities and when various people, you know, begin to yeah. see what the savings are, and this will be very clear to everyone shortly, um, then there's going to be a demand that's going to be off the charts. Now, Tesla is going to have some advantages in the beginning, and, and some of these advantages, I would expect them to just get better and better because that's who they are. Okay, But some of these advantages, no, people are going to catch up uh, uh, in terms of their advantages. Um, maybe not on the battery itself because maybe uh, – they are claiming to be ahead, let's say, by 
at least 20, 30% in terms of cost of batteries, and especially if they're making them themselves. But CATL makes their own batteries, and CATL, CATL is really good at it, and they're going to make uh, these, or they already are making these mega packs, or something similar. So there's going to be a lot of uh, competition, but it's going to be competition for a market um, that will be so huge that anybody that's making a compelling product at a compelling price probably is going to sell out for years, for years. So will margins come down? Not until, not until everybody that's making a compelling product at a compelling price. I'm using Elon's words, by the way. <laughs> it's, really? if, if, yeah, Elon has says, if you're not making a compelling product at a compelling price, you shouldn't be in business. Okay, so that's his first principles look at marketing. Make a compelling product at a compelling price. That is number one before everything else. Okay, so everybody that does that, everybody that makes a, a good enough product at a good enough yeah. price is probably going to sell out for years into the future. And if Elon and Tesla are slightly better, 10% better, better at customer service, better at arbitrage, better at yeah. software, better at how they build the thing, better at, better at how they design the layout. I mean, so many moving parts there. If they're, the, if they're able to maintain a, an edge, great. But all they really have to do is maintain equality with the top of the pack. And I just don't have any doubt that that's going to be an issue. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so you're saying the market is so massive that it's lots of room for everybody and... Just, just focus on your own production. The, mar the, the demand is huge. Yes. Okay. That's a good point. And then, so let's talk about the limiting factors. What is the thing that could um, restrict um, Tesla's energy business? Well, like with everything else, we've got this whole business with, is there enough, uh, is there enough um, raw material? Are yeah. there enough batteries being made? Yeah. I have been studying this and studying this and studying this. I am not as good as uh, as Jordan uh, <laughs> at the limiting factor at understanding all of this. And I've asked him multiple yeah. times, please, Jordan, give me your projection. And he's like, no, I'm not going to give any projection. I, I believe, based on Elon's statement, actually, it wasn't Elon's. I think it was uh, uh, one of the other executives who said, we have enough batteries now. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he didn't mean until 2035, but he said, if we have enough batteries now for both energy and for uh, auto. To me, that means they have enough energy, not for 23 and 24, but probably at least a 25 would be my guess, or you wouldn't say that. But beyond 25, I think there could be a, a difficulty. There could be a hump. There could be yeah. a, a time when everybody doesn't get every battery they want. But what has Elon been doing now for the last, oh, I don't know, 10 years? <laughs> He's been going out and securing whatever he needs. I've had a couple of comments on my YouTube channel where people are like, well, there's not going to be enough copper, and there's not going to be enough this, and there's not going to be enough that. And so my response to that is, when Elon thought there wasn't going to be enough uh, batteries, he went everywhere. Every time that he turned around, every time he was interviewed on Twitter, wherever he was, yes, he, he said, I will buy all the batteries in the entire world. I will. Not, I know I'm going to make my own batteries. I'll still buy all your batteries. Just yeah. come, put the purchase order in front of me. I'll sign it. <laughs> and so he doesn't say that anymore, which tells me he's got enough batteries. Then he said, oh, I, I need more nickel. I don't see where there's going to be enough nickel. And it's like, okay, I'll buy everybody's nickel. Just come and put the purchase order in front of me. He's not talking about nickel anymore might be opening up a plant in Indonesia, which might have something to do with why he's feeling comfortable about nickel. Then he says, okay, I need processing for lithium. <laughs> and he goes out and every time he's interviewed, I need processing for lithium. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe nobody stepped up. So what does he do? He breaks ground on a plant in South Texas to start processing lithium. So my theory based on watching Elon for all these years and writing about Elon for all these years is, yeah. This is all figured out years in advance. And sometime we're going to get to see Master Plan 3, right. and he's going to spell that out. And if he truly has a problem with copper, he's going to announce it someday. He's going to go, I'll buy all the copper. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're all excited for Master Plan 3. We're expecting him to announce 
two, three megafactories, more gigafactories, more refineries, and it's about global scale. Um, tell me about your your potential. Your, you're very bullish about this, right? So, what is the potential that you're looking at, uh, both in terms of the sales and impact to margin and earnings, but also to I think you already mentioned that you don't see anything tapping Tesla price until the macro changes. But what's your expectations in the future, like more than just next year? Yeah, so you know, uh, I make the statement that when I own my manufacturing, well, actually, my entire career, I've either been an import export uh, distribution. I've always been in yeah. a place where I had to make all these estimations. I've always had to build the spreadsheet. Right before computers had spreadsheets, I was having to <laughs> spreadsheets. <laughs> so, I'm yeah. sorry, did I give something away just then? <laughs> so, so. Um, you can put all this stuff on paper. You can you can spitball all you want to. You can think about it. You can do it by customer line by line. You can do it sure. by territory line by line. Sure. You can do it by product line by line. You can you can think it through fifteen ways from Christmas, and you'll be wrong next month. Mm -hmm. um, um, it, it, you, the, the statement has been made that you can prepare for war, but until you're actually on the on the battlefield, yeah. uh, then all your plans go out the window. So. Uh, I think that's exactly where we are uh, with regard to the future of Tesla, except that we have the man giving us the information himself about what his expectations are. And people say, well, Elon makes all these plans. He makes he creates all these uh, expectations in terms of what he's going to do, but then he's late or he never does it. Or, he, you know, well, I'm saying, yeah, he's late, but he's really, really good at projecting the things that he already has in place hmm. okay and what he has in place right now is he has a battery line that is doing some batteries and he says it's only engineering to get it to fully ramp he knows he's got a plant that's making energy storage uh, that's already there and it's just a matter of ramping it ramping it and then kick cookie cuttering the plant uh, he knows where the bodies are buried with regard to raw materials um, so if he says to me that i'm going to use about 1.5 terawatts of energy for of uh, of battery for battery storage for energy storage in 2030 i'm going to take him that he's going to be within i don't know <laughs> a few hundred yeah. gigawatts of hitting that yeah. number yeah. and so if you use the the napkin math that we just talked about at $500 yeah. a kilowatt hour and yeah. you multiply that times 1.5 okay. what do you got <laughs> 750 a billion dollars in sales, which is more than uh, Walmart. And at 50% margin. Well, again, it might not be at $500 a kilowatt by that time, because there yeah. might be some shrink in terms of, uh, in terms of the, of the pricing. Um, and it might not be 50% margins by that, time, but at, the, the, at those numbers, what difference does yeah. it make? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this is where you were hearing Elon saying that I see a path now for yeah. Tesla to be bigger than Apple and Saudi Aramco combined. And I uh, I don't know if I did a video on this or I'm just thinking about doing a video on this. <laughs> you have three known factors now that are all at this level that have nothing to do with robotaxis, have nothing to do with robots, nothing to do with anything else. You have auto, you have semi, and you have energy. And semi is also probably at the same level are just below the same level of potential sales as energy and auto. So you take the three together and now you're looking at well over a uh, trillion dollars in sales by the end of the decade, uh, just from those three. And that doesn't count the kinds of things that will be icing, on, not, not just icing right. on the cake, that will blow the world apart <laughs> in, terms yeah, yeah, of, yeah. in terms of sales and earnings. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm glad the semi is already in sales and it's in production and it's being sold. We're right. going to have to do another video on that Tesla semi, because there's a lot of, uh, I don't know yet if people have registered that what you just said there, that semi is going to be the same as large as the auto industry and energy industry, which is, you know, shocking. I for, think. for Tesla, for Tesla, for yeah. Tesla in the next five, you know, 10 years. Now with regards to the market cap for Tesla, the, the rev, the estimation that um, zero sum put out was that he said for a mega pack model, just the mega pack Tesla Energy, 
he is estimating uh, 2024, the earnings per share is $4.50. And that's 60 gigawatt hour uh, production. I just looked at in your, yours was a little lower than that. You're at 439, 40. Uh, 25 times that, which is the multiple, because that's what public utilities are at. Um, if if you apply a 25 uh, multiple, then it's $116 per share, which is we're pretty well there right now. <laughs> so just that alone by 2024, just the energy alone should represent what we have now, where we're at now. So that's so good I just think, if that's the case. I take, a, I, take yeah. a, I take a slightly different look. So I'm, I'm putting it at $3 a share. Uh, for 2024, and I'm putting it at a multiple of at least 35 because mm. we're not talking about a utility. We're talking about a we're talking about a company that's growing 50 percent a year, and in fact, their that division is going to yeah. be growing at 150 or 200 percent a year. So you could give it a multiple way over 100 and still be fair. So if we just take a, thir I, I get to the same number as him that it's worth probably 100 dollars easily. Yeah. Um, in this market right now today. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you subtract the cash. Because <laughs> you know there's there's twelve billion dollars, or I mean, sorry, was twenty two billion dollars sitting in cash with no debt. Um, the market is just nuts right now. There's just no there's no explanation for the current no. valuation yeah. of the company. Yeah, you cannot. And then okay, and this is this is us talking about mega packs it's being sold to utilities and and uh, commercial entities. We haven't yet talked about which is the very, very possibility is that Tesla Energy is going to be a utility. They <laughs> launched Tesla Electric, and there's now signs that a virtual power plant, which allows the power packs, the power walls, that consumers have in their garages to be an, a utility and actually buy and sell, right, uh, directly to the grid. Uh, so when Tesla actually becomes a utility themselves, how much more margin, how much more sales, all that stuff adds up to it, right? They become yeah, and, the utility. And there's, and there's more than just Texas. The Texas utility thing is, is, is just recent. They've already got a utility in, uh, in England. Uh, yeah. They've got, one, they've got another one someplace in Europe. I might be, I think it's Germany. Yeah. So they've got several utility companies that they've already started. Some of them are just for arbitrage. Uh, some of them are, you know, in other words, they are only wholesalers. But Texas, it looks like they're going to be a producer. Yeah. But that's but that's small potatoes. The big potatoes is that they're going to have at the end of 2024, they're going to have 100,000 superchargers okay. around the world. And yeah. eventually those are all going to be supported by solar and mega packs. Right. So it's so free. <laughs> every uh -huh. every nickel that goes through those goes into those cars all around the world, that nickel goes right like right to the bottom line. It's high high margin, yeah. Much higher than gasoline stations. And so imagine Crazy if I margin. told you that, yeah, che Chevron and Esso, those guys are like the top market cap companies in the world <laughs> <laughs> because they sell, they have all these gas stations and sell oil. Yes. So they they get it out of the ground and they put it in the tank. Look how Elon much cost that takes. Yeah. It, Elon's going to be getting it from the sun and putting it in the tank. And it's like, yeah, it's like free. It's like seconds, uh, microseconds before it gets in there, right? Versus all that refining and, and transportation. 100, and that's 100,000 of those uh, superchargers at the end of next year. I don't know if that, but yeah, by 2024, be, it's going to be enough, all right? It, it's, it'll take time for the, I think we're only at 5%. I saw the latest number that the, the world is now 5% electric vehicles. So, just, oh, I'm just saying, no, I'm saying that they have 40,000 chargers now, on yeah. top of the individual units. Yeah. About yeah, four thousand yeah. stations and about yeah. forty thousand pumps, or whatever yeah. we're going to call them now. <laughs> Supercharger. Yeah. Anyway, but they're projecting a hundred thousand by the end of twenty twenty four, and they're just going to have to multiply that. Uh, it's going to almost have to be fifty percenting that every year just to keep up. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, so this is very, very exciting. You walk me through quite a number of stats here and uh, the potential. So, just bottom line. You know, you've been seeing and hearing and you're participating. You're one of the first to start talking about this. Um, you are certainly a bull when it comes to mega packs. Uh, you think that it's something that we haven't been talking about enough. You think it's material. You think, that in fact, it's going to be massive. And we're going to be hearing a lot more about it by March 1st. I'm really hoping that that March 1st, or at least whenever uh, Elon comes out and starts talking about, the, you know, the master plan part three again, that 
that you know it's really a definitive statement right that we are building multiple mega pack factories here's what the margins are here's what the sales are here's what the total addressable market is we are building giga factories everywhere we are no longer just an auto manufacturer but an energy company and if they do that then that's where the narrative changes and maybe the pe will change as well by the second half of this year barring macro changes and in the environment right yeah, maybe yeah, even if with the macro, that that's my point. Like the switch yes. to energy, the the narrative of being an energy company could be enough uh, because it's recession proof. It's it's nothing to do with recession in that case. In fact, during recession, <laughs> you want to be a electric energy company, right? Yeah, I mean, if if the street decided once they got it, just to use zeros analysis, which again is almost identical to mine, just from a different way, uh, that it's worth $100 right now, um, that would double the stock overnight um, at the point that they go, yeah, that that totally makes sense. So, but would it more than double the stock? Maybe not, not in this market. No. But as the narrative, as the, as the risk on comes back, as the money comes off the sidelines right. and the multiples go up, uh, yeah, the, the energy storage business probably is worth, right now, today, if it was a separate company, if it was, if it was, uh, if it was, uh, you know, right. somebody was analyzing it separate from Tesla, it might be worth a lot of money right now. Yeah, well, that's actually opposite of what Emmett Pepper said. Emmett Pepper said, yeah. "Well, you know, I, I get, I, I'm all on board. I totally understand the potential for this. But if you did spin off Tesla Energy today, would anybody be valuing this at, um, you know, like a, a mega cap company?" <laughs> No, you know, it's massive potential, but you got to show it to me first. You got to show me the revenue before people will start, uh, you know, start giving you that multiple or that. Is that, is that, that, is that what price. happened with, with uh, all these different electric car startups? No factories, just drawings? <laughs> no, it's yeah. the story. It's the story. It's a story. In this particular case, you'd be talking about, a st I'm this guy that wants Elon to spin everything off, okay? But <laughs> so, so don't confuse me with somebody that thinks that they should keep it a conglomerate. Yeah. Um, because conglomerates never get valued as, as, as much as the sum of their parts. General Electric was the one who proved that big time mm -hmm. before you were born. I think, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but a long, long time ago, General Electric mm -hmm. was kind of the story case for. Yes. Not having to get the value out of their out yeah. of their various divisions, mm -hmm. so yes, I think uh, I think that if Elon Musk is associated with it, and he puts the numbers on it, and he does what you just said needed to be done, yes, the company would be yeah. worth a whole bunch right now. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Very yeah. optimistic at this point. Appreciate you teaching me a lot about Tesla Energy. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Randy. Love him. Love love coming back. Hope to do it again. <laughs>